Senate has fixed March 9 for the public hearing of the social media bill. The hearing is scheduled to begin at 11 a.m. at Senate Conference Room 022, Senate New Building, National Assembly, Abuja. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Judiciary and Legal Matters, Okbayami Bamidele, made the announcement in the published notice. Interested parties are expected to attend the public hearing and give their op options, opinions of pardon, as well as suggestions on the bill. Invited guests include the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, all media organizations, Guild of Editors, among others. The general public is also invited to the hearing. Having passed first and second reading, the public hearing is one of the final stages of the bill, after which the legislation will be considered and possibly passed into law. The bill, Protection from Internet Falsehood and Manipulations Bill 2019, sponsored by Mohammed Musa, was introduced in the Senate in November. And joining us in the studio is a public affairs analyst, Balan Ola Olojede. Thank you, Balan, for joining us this morning on Extended News. Yes. Now, what, what do you think is the impression of, um, of, of this bill, its, its, its popularity or its notoriety? What, what is your take on it? It's, it's, it's more or less of the latter, notorious. Yes. Um, you know, coming after we had this debate about the hate speech bill, now we have this coming into the fore again. It's a sieve. Um, we're still playing around the same issues, uh, things that bothers on, you know, things that bother on, you know, you're curtailing people's uh, free speech. Yes. That's, that's what it all looks like. And I'm glad that at least we're having a public hearing on okay. this. Um, at the public hearing, there will be other stakeholders, apart from the people who sponsor the bill and, and the National Assembly. Then issues can be true up, and, and we all sit down and discuss those uh, issues. It will particularly affect, I mean, the, the AUJ is there, and these are people who may be primary, uh, 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 you know, they are, they are in the forefront, and they might be more affected even than the ordinary person yes. on, on the road. So they are there in the room. Let's see what comes out of that kind of a deliberation. And, and what would you think this bill is similar or different to, to the hate speech bill? Uh, the, the, the hate speech bill is a bit more uh, extensive in, in coverage. This is a bit limited. Uh, the punishment are also a bit limited than what you have under the hate speech. But the, the, the fact is that the spirit behind the bill seems to be similar. A potent, uh, uh, a tendency to curtail people's free speech. And definitely people are going to fight back. Okay, on that. in your own opinion, why, why do you think we're having these two bills coming up almost simultaneously at, at the same time when we have all the um, myriads of challenges facing us as, as a people, as a nation at this point in time? It's glaring. Um, government wants to control um, how people take up news, how people spread news in the politics. Yes. Now, why do we need to do that? It's, it's, a, it's a show of certain failings. There are fake news all over the world. Whether you're talking about the US or the U, every part of the world, fake news is an issue. But there are other ways that countries are handling it, apart from communist country, uh, where you might have serial censorship, uh, maybe like China. In the first instance, the government itself must speak more to the people. When you speak more to the people, you narrow the room for conjectures and all sort of fake story populating the internet. So if, um, if, 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 if I, I'm the first one to talk about loans, 22.5 billion loans, 22.7 billion loans, for example, yes. I douse the fact that people will fabricate issues about that loans and put it in the air there. So the communication machinery of the government is, will have been a, a nice way to manage the issue of uh, you don't want people you know, talking fake news and all, all, all that. If you give us the right news at the right time, in the first instance, we will reduce that dramatically. And even where such news have come into the air, you come, you come back with facts and figures, and you, you defeat the news that may be raging in the, in the, in the public space. Now, the, the, the bill has passed the first and second reading, and today, the 9th of March, will be the public hearing, which is the final stage of, of the bill being passed. Now, what, what is the protocol to public hearing, and what comes next? Uh, well, the public hearing actually takes us back to that bill for possible amendment to incorporate the uh, uh, takings from the public hearing. So in the course of the public hearing, people have raised certain issues. We'll have made some suggestions. So we need to go back to that bill and see what needs to be amended in that bill before it goes further. But, but yes, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, the, the public feel 
kind of powerless to, to um, influence the proceedings of the House, even though they are meant to be making laws in our name. Now, how can the average man in the street make their feelings known about this bill? How do we do it? Because at the end of the day, those that will be part of a public hearing are not necessary people like us. They could be selected people. So how do we express the views, the opinion of the common man on the street and the marketplace in this bill? I think if you have invited Nigerian Union of Journalists, yes. you have invited the Guild of Editors, you've invited some other members of the public, you have enough representative. Unless we're saying that all those people will have been compromised because of this. But I don't think so. Okay. If it is my primary constituency that will, be that will be affected by this bill as a journalist, and I'm in that place to talk about that same bill, I should be represented. Now, now what, what, what aspect of this bill do you think is problematic, could be problematic, or needs to be scrutinized? Um, number one, you have the issue of definition in itself. Um, at, at what point does... Uh, does um, a news become fake? Uh, do we have certain criteria for measuring that? What elements can be fake about it for you to face that punishment of 300,000 or, 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 or three years in jail and, and, and all of that? I think, I think that is a bit controversial. Then the, the, if we don't have a clear definition for those offenses, what constitute offense for which people are going to be punished? We will have issues. Public affairs analyst, Belanho Lodjede, thank you very much for joining us on the segment. It's a pleasure.